In this particular video, we are going to look at the concept of job design. Today's video is part of the so-called human resource management concept series, which focuses on defining, explaining and analyzing some of the key human resource management concepts. So without any further ado, let's get started, guys. Whenever we hear the word designing, our brain usually subconsciously picks up images of designing buildings, designing websites, designing cars, or even probably designing clothes. Now, all these variations of designing have one aspect in common, which is to try and make things beautiful. Buildings can be beautiful, websites can be beautiful, cars can be beautiful, and of course, clothes can be beautiful too. Now, what about jobs then? Can we really say that jobs can actually be beautiful? So what is the whole idea behind designing jobs? This is what we want to discuss today. If we are to extend the notion of being beautiful to the HRM field and job design in particular, in order for jobs to be designed beautifully, they need to meet the needs of both the employer and the employee. Now, what are uh, some of the main needs of the employer or the so-called boss, the person or the company that we are working for? Of course, if we talk about businesses, uh, for-profit organizations, in other words, those would be, for instance, profit increase, market share increase and cost reduction among many other needs. When it comes to the needs of the employees or the people who work for us, they may include of course higher salary, more interesting work, flexible working time and probably possibilities for doing uh, the job from home or the so-called home office. Having said that, now let us look at some of the main approaches to job design. It is important to mention that job design has evolved from preoccupations with work simplification, standardization and division of labor to concerns with human needs in job performance. This in fact depicts the two main approaches to job design that we are going to look at in the next few slides. The first approach to job design is industrial engineering. Now, to those of you whose major is outside business and management, industrial engineering, in fact, is a continuation of the scientific management movement, also known as Taylorism. Taylorism, or scientific management, was mainly concerned with analyzing work methods and establishing time standards. Today, the so-called industrial engineering targets faster production, uniform quality, and so forth. Overall, the industrial engineering method seeks to fit the person to the machine. That is exactly why, even though many companies continue to use this approach today, many specialists believe that industrial engineering lacks relevance to most of the jobs today. Industrial engineering's current lack of relevance to job design is a very important topic within the human resource management discipline. It will be covered by the HRM Advanced Series in a video which is entitled Drawbacks of Taylorism. So if you wish to learn more about the main disadvantages of industrial engineering and of course a little bit more about scientific management or Taylorism, please make sure that you check our channel again or simply hit the subscribe button. Finally, let us look at the second approach to job design, which is human engineering. Human engineering aims to identify and respond to workers' needs in the performance of their jobs. Human engineering is largely influenced by the so-called behavioral science school, Prominent researchers in this field include Herzberg and Mayo, for instance. Unlike industrial engineering, human engineering 
seeks to feed the machine into the person. In other words, the philosophy behind human engineering is more or less the exact opposite of the philosophy of uh, industrial engineering. Some of the outcomes of uh, human engineering include user-friendly keyboards, ergonomic chairs, and so forth. One of the most prominent examples of human engineering is the standard typewriter keyboard, also known as QWERTY, which was developed over 100 years ago. Now, one of the prominent questions over the years has been why the QWERTY standard and not sequential, alphabetical, or any of the other keyboard layouts. It turns out that, according to some historians, based on the frequency study of letter pairs in the English language, certain letters, if kept next to each other, would usually cause a jam. And that is exactly why not the sequential alphabetical keyboard layout, but the QWERTY keyboard layout became the world standard. While uh, this example of human engineering is often described in uh, many of the human resource management textbooks, it is important to know that in recent years, the explanation for the development of QWERTY has been challenged. In fact, a article from year 2019, which was published by Forbes, gives a rather interesting alternative explanation as to why and how the QWERTY keyboard layout was developed. Importantly, we need to emphasize that job design has already become a critical issue in retaining or keeping employees. In other words, the inability to address our employees' needs usually results in higher employee turnover and vice versa. Specifically, if we are able to design jobs that match our employees' needs, then we have a higher chance of retaining them. This is all for today, guys. Thank you once again for watching yet another video on the HRM Academy channel. Do not forget to follow us, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, and of course, don't forget to click on the YouTube subscribe button so that you can stay up to date with the latest videos and other educational content that we will have for you in the near and far future.